In this part, I'm going to give a facelift to the application on the left to look like the one on the right. It's going to be a good makeover using semantic UI CSS framework. Let me go into the code and then I'll show how you can change the user interface to look more modern using a CSS framework. First thing I want to do is to go into the index.html and bring the, the CSS library using the CDN for semantic UI. So it's going to be a link tag and this is how it's going to look like. So it's going to look into cdn.js.deliver.net and semantic UI min.css. Semantic UI is a very clean um, syntax. It uses um, the natural language um, nouns for the classes and it leaves a clean HTML. If you want to read more about it, go to semantic-ui.com and learn more about it. Okay, so now I'm going to run the application using the integrated terminal, which will open up in the same folder from where we launched Visual Studio Code. And I'm going to type au run dash dash watch. And that'll compile and you'll see a few errors because remember there were a property, dynamic properties called style that were not members of the interface element. So to fix that, I'm going to quickly make some changes into the code. So I'll go inside the resources attributes and go in there and then I will typecast this element into HTML element so that style property will be available on that so that it won't give the compiler error. I'll do the same thing on all other um, classes as well. So I'm going to go here and typecast it. I'll do the same thing in dynamic style as well. So that should fix all these compiler errors. And I'll, there's only one more left in uppercase. Here we go. And now if I save all, you can see that it'll start transpiling them and then you won't see those red errors on the screen. Okay, so now let's move on to refactoring and rearranging the source code a little bit. Okay, so I'm going to take this custom to do HTML custom element from this folder into the elements folder because it belongs there because it's a custom element. So I'm going to move to do.c to ts first followed by to do.html. So I'm going to select them one by one and move them. Now that's going to break the application. Don't worry about it. We'll fix them later. Okay, so to do.ts and to do.html. Okay, so I'm going to stop this because it's going to give compiler errors. I don't want to see the errors because we're going to fix them one by one. Okay. And then I'm going to make some small changes into this to do.ts custom element to just add a small debug code. Okay. So I'm going to copy this and paste it. This is a convention method. The property name followed by changed method will be uh, automatically invoked by Relia. So when somebody changes this, when somebody binds a value into this done, it'll come into done changed and all I'm doing is I'm just displaying the value that is being modified. So that's just for it's a small helper method that I added. It's a hook method that will be called from called by Aurelia. Okay, and then I'm also going to give facelift into the studio.html with the semantic UI styles. As you can see, I'm adding a nice little icon, a large icon, and the name of the icon is tasks, and it is middle aligned icon. So if you read that, it's it's a natural language. It's plain English rather than like btn-normal um, or i-something. It uses a very simple nouns. So that's the beauty of um, semantic UI. Okay, so now that we have reorganized our custom element into the elements folder, let's go and change our index.ts because this is where you need to add if you want to use them without the require tag because it's going to be globally available for us. So I'm going to add the newly added attribute is called to do. So now that will be available throughout the application without having to do a require tag. You don't have to say require from and then the path of the uh, custom element. Okay, cool. Then um, I will add a new custom attribute called autofocus because if you want to 
set the focus onto a custom element, um, you need to use the autofocus. HTML5 has a uh, built-in attribute called autofocus. If you give it on any built-in HTML element, it will automatically move the cursor um, onto that element. But I would like to add a custom attribute because Aurelia custom elements can leverage that. And I'm going to call that auto-focus so that it will be a different name than the built-in attribute. Okay, quickly, I will bring the code and I'll explain that. Okay, so I imported custom attribute, auto inject, and binding mode, um, and task queue. I'll explain them one by one. Um, I want to name this attribute auto dash focus, and then the binding mode is going to be a two way binding mode. Um, that's just because if you want to make changes to the view model, it will reflect in view. View will reflect in view model. That's that's called two-way binding. And then auto inject is the TypeScript um, um, decorator. All it does is whatever you give in the constructor, it will automatically create an instance for them using dependency injection. Aurelia framework has dependency injection built into the framework itself, so you no longer have to say element equals new element because Aurelia will give you an instance if you use this at auto inject decorator. Based on the type of the constructor um, arguments, it'll automatically create an instance of them and it'll inject them into this properties element and task queue. Okay, so the task queue is used to um, wrap the browser's tasks queue. So if you want to add any DOM manipulation, always use a micro task. So you can queue the micro task and then in here, all that I'm doing is I am just getting that element on which this custom attribute is declared and then set the focus onto that using the dot focus um, DOM method. So, and then since I use queue micro task, it'll be at the bottom of the queue and then it'll execute it synchronously. Whereas if you want to have a long running asynchronous task, use the task queue dot queue task, which will create a macro task, which will take longer time to execute. Okay, and attached is a callback method. Um, this will be invoked after the element um, is, is attached into the DOM. So then at, this, at that point in time, you call the give focus, which will set this um, focus call inside the queue, and then it'll run that synchronously. So the cursor will go into the uh, input element, okay, which is where we're going to set the autofocus. And I'll we'll, I'll show you how to use this autofocus inside my app.html uh, when we when we give the makeover into the app.html. Okay, so now we need to go back into the index.ts inside the resources and add that one as well. Oh, actually, this is the elements because that's to do is a custom element. It's in the elements folder, whereas the autofocus is a custom attribute, so it's in the attributes folder. Let's move on now into a plain um, class called to do uh, because I want to use that to to transfer the properties like description and done rather than using the custom element. I want to use a lightweight object. So I'm going to create a simple to do.ts view model that only has the absolutely required properties that I want to pass on between my layers, between the um, the view model, um, custom element, or from the parent element to the child element. I'll use this lightweight structure. Um, so I have an ID, which is going to be used to uniquely identify that, and a description and a done property. And in the constructor, I'm taking an object as an argument. I use the ECMAScript object.assign, which will take this JSON object, and then if there is a match, it'll assign them. Uh, the One of the cool things about this passing the, as an object is, you could pass an object in any shape you want. You could give ID, first name, last name, and all those stuff. It's going to ignore those properties that does not match with the target, which is the, this um, this variable, which means that it'll only look for ID, description, and done. You, even if you pass a huge JSON object, it'll ignore the rest, and it'll only copy the ones that match, and that too, it'll do a deep copy. That's a cool thing about this. Okay, so that is a simple to-do. Now let us create a simple service or repository, as we call, to to, to simulate an in-memory uh, repository. Okay, so I'm going to create a new folder. It's not required that you have to create a folder, but I'm going to create it so it, it is nice it is nicely organized. So I'm going to create a service called to do dash service .ts, and then I will bring my completed source code. I'll explain that. It's going to have the CRUD methods, create, read, update, delete methods. 
and a few other methods as well. So I'll go over one by one. Um, here I'm declaring a last ID, which is used to increment the ID of the to-dos that are being added. And then I have a to-dos array. And all these getters will return all to-dos, and this will return only the to-do that matches the given ID. Since the filter method is used, which returns an array, I want to return the first matched item by calling the dot pop. Okay, add to-do, as you can guess by now, is used to add a new to-do. Whenever you type some new to-do and then hit enter, it'll go into this add to-do helper method, and then it'll add them into the array. And the the ID, if the ID is not set, it'll increment the last ID. And then it, do, it uses the array.push. Similarly, delete. I'm not really doing a splice here by locating the index. Rather, I ignore the one that uh, matches this ID and then bring the rest of them and put them into the to do's array. It's another way of deleting. So I'm just filtering out the one that I need to delete. Um, update to do ID will get the, uh, get the to do by ID. And then if there is a valid ID, a to do that matches the ID, then we will assign, we will assign the incoming arguments. The beauty of this, again, I already explained it, is you don't have to always pass the full structure uh, with ID, description, and done. If you just want to update done, you just want to pass JSON that says done colon true, and then it will only update that part of the object or that property of the object. That's the beauty of this object.assign. Toggle to do done is like you pass a uh, to do and then it'll it'll look at the done property. If it is true, it changes into false. If it's false, it changes into true. Very simple. Filter to dos. This is one of the main topic of this part. We want to filter the the to dos array based on the criteria, and I've defined three criteria named active, completed, and all. All, as you can guess by now, is going to simply return the full array. Active will return only the active to dos, which means that their done property shouldn't be set to true. Completed means they're done properties set to true. So it uses the filter to filter them out. As you can see, I'm using a cool feature from TypeScript called type union. Um, I might have, I could have used a string property. The problem is string is open-ended. I could pass foo, bar, raja, anything that I want, but I want to constrain my type to only take these three possible string values, kind of like an enumeration with string constants. Since there is no such thing in TypeScript, we're using the union type. Type filter, we declare a type and we export it because this can be used in app.ts as well. And I define that three possible values, all, active, and completed. If you pass anything else, it'll throw a compiler error at the time of compilation. Okay, so that is filter and toggle all to dos. It simply changes the done to an to the negative uh, or the not value, which is true becomes false, false becomes true. So it toggles all to dos. This is going to look beautiful in the UI because I'm using um, a switch control. So it true will will turn the switch on. Um, and false will turn the switch off. So when you when you do a toggle, anything that's already on will become off. Anything that's off will become on. So you'll see the slider moving left and right beautifully. Um, complete all to-dos will set all the done property to true. And then remove all to-dos will delete that, or it'll clear the array. And remove done to-dos will only check for the, uh, will filter the um, active to-dos into the new to-dos array which means that the ones that are done will be eliminated using this not true dot done clause. Okay, so that is to do service. So now that we've defined a service, our app.ds will become a simple wrapper on top of to do service. It'll simply delegate for all these methods. There will be an equivalent method in app.ds. It'll simply call to do service dot and then the name of the method. So it's a simple delegation. It becomes very lightweight. Okay, so let's go into app.ts now. And then we will, um, I'll bring the completed code and I'll explain that. And as you can see, it'll become a very lightweight wrapper on top of to-do service. Because now the heavyweight or the real operations are happening in the service layer. Okay, as you can see, I have defined a filter to-dos because I am going to always call the services filter to do's method and based on the active filter I'll only return that many number of to do's so we don't get the full to do array all the time because if the filter is set to active it'll only show the active to do's if the filter is set to completed it'll show the completed to do's and so on similarly I maintain the active filter which is a type filter enum I import that as well as you can see and um, everything else is already there before in the, in the previous part I explained all of this so in the constructor, I set the filter to all, active filter to all, and I call the filter to-dos, which is going to call the underlying service filter to-dos. And 
I assign the return value because it's going to always return an array based on the filter and that array gets assigned into the filtered to do's and this is what gets rendered in the UI in the app.html okay and all other methods are self-explanatory because they are just wrappers on top of the service methods the only thing that you have to notice is like every time i add a new um to do or a remover to do i'll always remember to call the filter to do's because we don't know or we will not know which filter is active so we need to react and return only the exact number of to do's based on the filter so whenever you make some changes into the to do's array always call the filter to do's so that it will return the exact number of to do's that matches the active filter it's as simple as that so um, there are some helper methods like get the count of all to do's get the count of active to do's get the count of completed to do's these will all be rendered beautifully in the ui like a like a small um, header bar that shows how many number of active to do's are there how many number of active uh, how many number of completed um, to do's are there and so on okay so let's save this now we'll turn our attention into the final part which is the html for the app app.html where we'll have the semantic ui styles added okay so in here um, as you can see that top part is going to be a simple form with a input type and that's where I'm using the auto dash focus custom attribute so that when you launch the browser and, and go to localhost 9000 the focus automatically comes to the text box so you can start typing the tasks and description and hit enter to start adding them one by one um, similarly there are buttons to add that to do and um, then we have this three tab which has the labels all active and completed to filter out the, the to do's then we have the um, the status that I told or the, um, or the nice header that shows the statistic of the total number of to-dos, the active to-dos and the completed to-dos and so on with a nice icon. And then the, the command buttons that removes all to-dos, removes only the completed to-dos, toggle all to-dos and only com or complete all to-dos. And then finally, the custom control that renders the to-dos list. And this is what we've talked in the previous part. And then there's a button in each of those rows to delete that particular to-do. Okay, now that we've finished all of this, let's launch the AU by doing the AU run dash dash watch. And once it starts serving in localhost 9000, we'll open up the browser will create will open up another tab let's wait for it it's still bundling it as soon as we see this start serving in localhost 9000 yes it's ready now application is available now let's type localhost 9000 and we should see the new ui there we go you can see that all buttons are grayed out because there is no to do to act on but as soon as i type one character you can see that the add button will be enabled and I will hit enter, it'll add task two. Now we can see that all buttons are turned on except the remove completed, because there should be at least one completed task in order for this button to be enabled. Watch now, as soon as I complete it, 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 it is active or it is enabled. When I turn it back into active task, this gets grayed out. And you can see that the count goes up and down based on the changes I make. And this is what I meant by filters. Let me add one more so you can see that. Okay, I have two tasks. One is active, another one is uh, one is completed, another one is active. So all will show all to do's, also also known as tasks. When I go to the active, you should see only one. So task two is active, task one is completed. So depending on the the tab that you click, it applies the appropriate filter. And toggle all will toggle. This is what I told. The sliders will <laughs> exchange. You can see that. Okay, and complete all will complete everything and a single remove will remove that column or that row and then remove all will remove everything. Okay, so that concludes the styling and filtering of to-dos in Aurelia.